lighting. Hi! Hi everyone! How you doing? Let me fix this lighting real quick. Where is it? Uh, a bit dark. There we go. Much better. Brighter. Yes? Yes. Hi! Hello everyone! Who's in the live chat room right now? Let me see here. Um, let me pull it up. Okay. First one in, HG Web Design. How are you doing? Welcome back. Welcome back, Pablo. Chitlin's Laundry. Sounds like a cool business. Uh, legit? Uh, I hope it is. What's up? What's up to you? How you doing? Marine from Texas, but moved to Florida. How are you doing? Welcome back. John Leigh, hey Nelson, London, UK here. Great to finally get on a live session. Yes, thank you for being here. It is 6 p.m. over there. Yes, so thank you for uh, spending your evening with me and the rest of the community in the live chat room. Colleen, hello, my wonderful, wonderful moderator of these live streams. And thank you. Each week, she comes in and donates a coffee and she helps with the running these streams i mean she's helping uh, organize the the questions that i may have missed and uh she's super awesome thank you so much colleen scott is back happy saturday to you too long weekend of just staying indoors if you're in the u.s it's memorial day weekend and we'll stay indoors <laughs> until we figure this all out. Uh, Eli, welcome back. Thanks, Nelson, for your videos and for bringing us all together. You're welcome. This is the least I can do to, to help out um, and, and give knowledge to as many people as possible. Jason, that's a new name. Welcome. Glad you're here. 20G, welcome back. Dimitri, nice to see you. Um, Pablo, yeah, yeah. Paul. You did great with the tabs, bravo. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, if we haven't met yet, my name is Nelson, and I like doing these streams. I like making uh, Webflow tutorial videos and just helping everyone learn how to use Webflow. I've been a fan of Webflow since 2013 when I first launched in closed beta. You can listen or watch my whole backstory over at nocode.video or um, on the podcast of visualdev.fm. Uh, I was interviewed on both of those both of those websites, so if you want to hear about my backstory and how I got into Webflow and web design, they are there. Um, but yeah, big fan, and I've always wanted to tell people, basically telling people, use Webflow, it's the future! And I've been doing that since 2013, and I'm doing that live on these streams. Uh, DJ OLA, new to the live chat, but definitely a fan. Thank you so much. Um... And yeah, where are you all from? I know we have some people, obviously from the UK, uh, from Florida, um, but yeah, yeah. Thank you all so much for being here. I want to know where you're from, because I love this global community. John, B hey John, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually working on John's website right now, and um, I don't know what time it is over at where you're at, John, right now. But uh, thank you so so much for being a fan and also. Um, trusting me with your brand and your Webflow site. Uh, we'll get it launched soon. That's going to be fun. Alexander, love learning Webflow from you. Would love to learn more about dark light mode switcher. Ah, yes, and cookies to store the mode between pages. That's something I still need to get into. Uh, Atlanta, Holland, new rookie, but hidden fan. Hidden fan? <laughs> uh, thank you so much, uh, Abel. For being here. BNJH Holland, welcome. It is 7 p.m. over there, John. Thank you so much for spending your your evening uh, with me. All right. Ugh. Ooh. <laughs> My voice cracked. All right. So what are we doing today? What are we talking about today? Uh, main topic for today. Uh, last week's stream, I forgot who asked, but someone said, hey, can you make an audio player? Can you can you put Amplitude JS, which is which is a JavaScript li um, library? Can you put Amplitude JS into Webflow? 
And as I was looking at the code last week towards the end of the stream, I was like, mm, I don't know, I don't know. And then as I read it more and started to think about it during the stream, I was like, all right, I'll challenge myself. Let's do it. So that's what we're doing this uh, this week. Can you put Amplitude JS inside of Webflow and make a custom audio player? And honestly, I, I played with it for like 10 minutes before the stream. Uh, yeah, I, I like to cram. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the answer is yes, it's possible with limitations, obviously. So we'll get into that later in the stream. But uh, before we get into that, uh, let's talk about things. What? Uh, hold on. Hold on. There we go. Wait, that's not it. Where'd I put my... Oh, well, uh, uh, there it is. I have to open up a Google Doc real quick. Oh, uh, there we go. Ah, topic. First topic. Um, actually, let, let's, let's go to my screen real quick. I am super hyped about this. Let me see. Is this, is this coming through? No, it's not? The audio? There it goes. Yeah. I am super hyped about this launch. Two astronauts about to go from the U.S. soil for the first time since 2011 to the International Space Station on a completely private uh, company rocket. Everything is built by a private company called SpaceX. If you don't know them, oh my gosh, please educate yourself because when I see something like this, I freak out because because I'm thinking, I'm thinking about how many hours, how many days, how many years did it take for this group of awesome engineers, scientists, um, to, to figure out how can we autonomously send people from, uh, send people to this space station autonomously. Like right now, in order for them to get to the space station, for people to get to the space station, they have to use a Russian, um, Russian vehicle called the Soyuz, and in that, in that capsule, there's so many knobs and buttons, and things are, a little, things feel a lot uh, manual to to do, and plus, you need the Canada arm on the space station to actually hook up to the Soyuz and then bring it in. So a lot of things are manual. With this new Crew Dragon, a lot of things is automated. And it makes me also think about no code. You know, there's so many things that you can control if you're just using code. But, um, but no code and Webflow automates all that stuff for you. So you can just focus on your mission rather than having to worry about how to get there. Let the no code tools get there for you so you can keep your mind focused on just whatever that main mission is. The mission isn't, I got to get there. The mission is whatever you have to do when you get to your destination. Anyways, big fan of SpaceX, big fan of uh, space exploration, NASA and all things space. Um, Cause it takes the best of us, the best of humans to come together and build these things and make things easier so we can all in as a human human species enjoy it and one day private citizens will be able to go to the space station isn't that crazy anyways that's just my thing about that um next next thing i wanted to talk about is webflow created or actually the printful team created an integration with uh, Webflow. So what had happened was a lot of people from the Printful community were building Webflow sites. And they kept asking, how do we integrate, how do, how do we integrate Webflow e-commerce with Printful? Because I want my customers to buy a t-shirt 
and I want that inventory to also be inside of my Webflow e-commerce site. So the Printful team actually worked with us. They reached out to Webflow and said, hey, let's work together and make this happen. And it's here. And they even made tutorials for it. So, I mean, that's really, really cool. And it shows you how big the Webflow community is growing and how many people want these type of inter um, integrations. So, uh, oh, I don't have a picture of my shirt. I have to download it. Hold on. Let me look for it real quick. Thank you, Colleen, for the links. You're on it. Oh my gosh, you're on it. Where's my... I have to pick it up from Slack. Hold on. So when that happened, um, I asked my wife, hey, you should make me a shirt. Can you make me a shirt? And she was like, okay. Let me... Let me see. Okay. Uh, open it. Okay. Da, da, da. Cool. So yeah, I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> so if you are very young and you don't know what this object is, <laughs> don't worry. It's, it's the save icon. All right, and uh, she made they quickly made this for me. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should try the Printful integration and, and do this. So I don't know if. What do you guys think? Should I? Should I sell this? I mean, I I kind of want to make one for myself and just wear it, but yeah. And it wasn't until my wife actually uh, made made this shirt that I that I've learned about the little tagline that I keep saying make the web beautiful together and then when she made beautiful together it like hit me mind blown I was like wait I've been saying beautiful together this whole time and that's what I love I love it when people build things together for a greater purpose that's amazing kind of like the webflow team how we're, we're the webflow team builds and supports the webflow community in hopes that you will all build something beautiful for a bigger for a bigger better purpose mind blown anyways make the web beautiful together uh yeah, okay, cool. I see some people in the chat. Nice floppy. Oh yeah, yeah, sweet. Happy face. Okay. Um I will make a simple page if I have time connect it to Printful and just see how that works. Cuz it seems simple based on Printful's tutorial, but we'll see. Nelson, can you could you make a calculator on Webflow? Oof. No, I cannot. That is something that I cannot do, Mario. Uh, yeah. And, oh, what else was I going to talk about? Where is it? Oh, wait. No. Close. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The community. So, um... The... So this community, so someone DM me and asked me a question and I can't get to everyone's question. That's what I do all day at Webflow. Uh, I do customer support and I answer everyone's questions as much as possible. And um, I still get questions on Instagram, Twitter DMs, Twitter mentions, this my, my YouTube channel, and I can't get to them all. But that person said, I know you're busy but thank you so much for creating this community. And it just hit me. Yeah, I did create a community, a, a Pixel Geek community. And so I'm wondering, should I take that even further? And I'm trying to be as honest and transparent with you all. So I'm wondering, should I create a Pixel Geek community? So using, I don't know, the maybe the buy me a coffee membership feature that I have or the YouTube membership feature that um that was just unlocked for me 
recently. So, I don't know. Should we create a community? And if so, what would you want for what would you want to happen in this exclusive community? Um, and just to get your minds jogging a little bit, uh, I just wrote a bunch of ideas down, and I'm like, maybe in this community, it's an exclusive Slack channel where people can see the feed of new videos as they come out. Um, they can people in that Slack channel can vote for the next stream topic. Um, exclusive project feedback videos, maybe like you can get a pro you send me a project and I'll give you um, a, a video feedback, but only once a month because I don't have much time. Um, maybe try to ask for discounts from like JetBoost, Rancigal's Masterclass, Parabola, Zapier. Maybe I, if I can like say, hey, can we, can we do some discounts? I don't know. Um, and then also I thought exclusive clonables and maybe a members only stream once a month where it's like a longer, like a one hour longer stream. I don't know. So those are just some of my thoughts. Could you come over to my house? Sorry, Scott, I cannot because of the pandemic. And also, <laughs> and also, no, <laughs> sorry. Uh, someone else bought me a coffee. Was that 10, 20? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. It's, I'll talk about that soon. Share great designs using Webflow and sharing their work. Yeah. Share, share great designers. Yeah, we can do that too. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. I mean, is am I going too far with this? Should I not use the membership? And should, I, should it just be an open public Slack channel? Or should it be an exclusive one? Let me know. Mark. Welcome. Welcome back to the stream, Mark. <laughs> Mark's one of our QA engineers over at Webflow. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, why not do it? You can build the spaceship while you fly it. You don't want to look back and be like, I could have, should have, so do it, yes. 20G says yes. And even if I only have five members, that would be awesome because that's more than I would ever think. Like. The fact that there's 27 people on the stream right now, like that's more than I ever thought would be on the stream. So thank you all so much. All right, so that's what's happening in my head. Um, lastly, last topic, and then we'll get into the amplitude JS. Um, there we go. Let me put this up. And to be as transparent as possible, oh, let me refresh this. You all have donated $646 to my coffee fund, and I can't thank you all enough. So, um, with this, uh, let me put that there. So, with this, I'm thinking, I need a better streaming PC, because things have been laggy on my old one. I think it's like three or four years old or something like that. Probably. Or even five. It, it's uh, it's pretty old. <laughs> and so it's it's struggling. And I want to I wanna up the game. And so with this money, I want to upgrade the, um, uh, the parts. At least the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM, and the video card. So those things... And yeah, so so th those things maybe can have a we can have a smoother stream, and not have all these laggy issues when I'm doing stuff. But uh, yeah, so that's where this is going to. So thank you so much to everyone who has donated, uh, and people who are continuing to donate. Thank you so much. Who who was this? Wait, can I see on the screen? Let me see here. Let me go back to my refresh. Uh, Scott, 
<laughs> Scott, Scott bought me a coffee and said, for your eventual haircut. Okay, yes. Thank you so, so much, Scott. Uh, hey, Nelson, hope you're having a great day. Uh, lit shirt, by the way. Thank you so much. Yeah, my wife made it. All right, so let's get into the main topic. It is 1030. That's uh, more than enough time for those morning announcements. Let's get to it. Uh, open up the thing. The thing. That thing right there. Uh, cool. So, uh, Alexander, thank you so much for the coffee. You rock. So, last week, someone said, Can you put Amplitude JS inside of Webflow? And the code seems simple enough if you can understand HTML and CSS. This seems simple enough. You have basic divs, an image for the cover art, and in, yeah, in spans. And then you have CSS, and it seems a little bit confusing because it's, it just seems very messy compared to just doing it inside a web flow and styling it in the style panel. But, um, yeah, it didn't seem too crazy. Um, and let's see here. And then the JavaScript to make it all happen. Yeah, not, it didn't seem too crazy. You have, um, just the name of the thing and then the artist album, the URL to the actual MP3 and then a URL to the cover art and then, yeah. Not too hard. And so I was playing around with it 10 minutes before the stream. And if I refresh, uh, I press play. Is the audio coming in? Yeah. So the audio is working. And this little, oh, my screen. I hate when I do that. <laughs> I'm explaining and you don't see my screen. <laughs> so <laughs> the HTML. <laughs> Is simple. The CSS seems a bit simple. The JavaScript, not too hard. Um, and I put it inside of Webflow. And it seems to be working. Yeah, so there you go. It's... You got this progress bar, you got the time. Obviously these aren't um, styled correctly, but this is the cover art right here. Um, yeah, so all I did was just embed the stuff. So if I go here, I've embedded that CSS. I just copy pasted. And for the HTML, I just copy pasted the HTML. And for the JavaScript that pulls in the Amplitude JS library, I just copy and pasted and replaced the URL for the MP3 and the cover art to uh, this image that I've uploaded that's in the Webflow library. All right. But let's customize it more and start from scratch, actually. So. This is my first go at it, meaning to customize it all and everything. So let's try. Let's try. And that's why I put in the YouTube description, we'll try. And that's why I tweeted, we'll try. Because will this work? I don't know. Let's get to it. Container, drag it in. Put some margin so it's not at the top. Um, and let's compare, let's, let's look, let's look at the HTML. So we're, let's see here. Ah, yeah, that's what I was going to do. So let me just copy over that first HTML embed, which actually, no, sorry. The second HTML embed, which has all of our, all of our, um, HTML. Okay. So I'm just going to copy. Sorry, copy the HTML embed element, and I'm going to paste it in here. Cool. 
and interesting how come this is already colored blue i didn't style anything okay so uh, first thing i want to do is style all this stuff and i can find let's see here i can i can i can find the class names by looking at the html like bottom container class uh class bottom container class amplitude and so what i'm thinking is I can just put divs on the page and start styling them with the same class name. And so the styles will show up here. So I don't know. Will this work? Yeah, <laughs> but I'm going to try. Uh, so first thing I want to do, uh, let's see here. Bottom container. I don't bottom container. So let's do this. I'm going to put in a div. Call it bottom container. And if I change this, there we go. Yep. Hold on real quick. So this is our audio player. That has our stuff. And this is like my work bench where I'm like styling everything. So because I've styled bottom container with a background, a random background color, it's also doing it to the element that's inside of here, inside of the HTML, okay? So I'm, in a no-code way, I'm doing this right here. Where's bottom container? I don't know. Um, um, somewhere in here. I don't know. Do I have to style that? <laughs> Maybe I should just go from top to bottom. Again, I'm bouncing around. This is not really tutorial, more of a exploration. But as with everything, you, as with every stream, you'll be able to clone this project. Uh, control container. Let's see here. Maybe we should play with this one first. Control container. It has. to play pause okay hmm hmm okay well control container let's let's try control container first because I don't know what that bottom container is actually used for so play progress let's do this one first there we go control container so I'm going to delete this. I'm going to remove class. But because I've removed class, that doesn't mean Webflow just deleted that CSS if I added any. No, it saves it here in the style manager. And so you can see it right here. All right. So that that style, those styles, that CSS is still saved within, within Webflow. All right. So I'm going to add control container. And let's give this a different color. Hmm, looks like nothing's happening in here. Okay, let's try something else. Amplitude play pause. I'm going to delete this. Play pause. And let's give it a different class name. I mean, a color. Interesting. I have no idea what's happening right now. <laughs> Since nothing is... Nothing is is happening. <laughs> what? Maybe I should go to the other page. Okay, things are happening here. Is it because of? Ugh, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Let me press publish and see what happens. Oh, look it! We can see our stuff. Interesting. So yeah, it is possible to do some things <laughs> all right maybe i should do it here on this page because it seems like it's working huh okay i don't know what's going on everyone but i'm trying to do it so this play pause button 
SVG is coming from that one website. <laughs> this is a very scattered, scatterbrain exploration stream. So if you can't follow along, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a challenge that I took. So let me bring this all over here. Yeah, let me do it on the other page. Put a container, and this is, those are the styles, this is the HTML, and this is the JavaScript that actually runs it all. And so down here, I'll just add a div, so it's like my workbench, so I can just fiddle around with things. All right, so we have that. I wish I can see it more. Let's see here. Maybe play pause. Can I? I'm already, yeah, I'm already messing around with play pause. And so if I can, if play pause, it doesn't have a background. Why? Oh, the background is being removed and replaced with this. Why would you remove background color? Huh. Okay. Let me refresh. And okay. Looking better. Looking better. All right. What do I want to style? What do I want to style? Let me. Hmm. Let's just style the cover art. We're actually this whole thing right here. Let's let's make it more of a card. Let's let's figure this out. We'll figure this all out together. This container overflow hidden, and let's round out the corners to be like twenty. Okay, that's good. Border radius, or sorry, uh, border, and let's make it faint. Push this away. And give it a box shadow so it has like an outer glow distance zero blur 20 size zero and then the color is like faint let's see what that looks like okay maybe it should be thinner so i'm gonna put it in a basic div rather than a pre-made pre-made um, Webflow container. You use the same class, but give it a max width of say 550. Center that. Okay, okay. I'm feeling it. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Let's, now that we have our album art, let's go ahead and inspect. And what is this? Bottom container. Maybe the bottom container can be, have padding inside. Mm, no, not, no, never mind. Progress. Okay, progress. Let's mess around with pro progress. So I'm gonna click on this and give it a class name of progress, uh, amplitude song played progress. And did you add your own image into the embed? Was it from the assets panel? Yes, I did. Thank you so much for reminding me. So what I did was I uploaded a image and then if you click on the little cog wheel and then you see this little icon right here, that's a link directly to the image. So you can right click, copy link address. And then what I did was I pasted it into the cover art uh, URL. Okay, so I pasted it there. Great question. All right, moving on. So we're messing around with progress. So this progress, what if I can, I like that blue, but let's go ahead and make it um, a better blue. Oh, look at things are changing. Let's do it like that. What happens if I do that? Ooh, it breaks. That's nice. Why did it break? 
So if I don't add the color and press play. Okay. So, uh, GG, I broke it. Why? Um, let me remove class and delete that one. Huh. Why can't I style the progress? Huh? There's no progress style in here. That's interesting. Oh, and if you want to follow along, here's the URL. Where's where's the progress? No, I re Going back. Okay, you're still there. How are you being styled? Like, how'd you get that background color? How'd you get that border color? Is Oh, so this is the HTML tag called progress. But I can't style it? What? Background gray or green. So if you try to style an HTML element called progress, you break it? John's asking, um, is that a permanent URL link? You can change it, it won't change, and you can do the same for the MP3 file. So I got the MP3 file from a free music archive right here, and all of these are MP3s, and so I just right clicked copied the link address and then pasted it into the URL. Okay. So lesson learned, um, the progress breaks when you add a background color to it. Okay. What if I just do color? Okay. Didn't break, but Show me, show me, can I fast forward? Oh, I can fast forward. Okay. But it's blue. How do I change to green? How to change progress HTML tag color. Um, oh, wait, uh, so you have to code it because so Webflow doesn't have these things where you can put uh colon colon and then an actual, I don't know what you call these, but huh, so you break it. If you don't, unless you do this. Yeah. All right. Well, can we make this full, full width? No, ah, you can. Okay. Well, there's that. Or can we make this display block? Does nothing. All right. So that's one thing we can do. Can we also mess around with height? Say 20 pixels? No? God, this progress is interesting. Can I put padding? Oh, I want to make a thicker bar. Can we add thick? <laughs> thicker? <laughs> make thick. <laughs> it's attribute tabs. Oh, I'm learning. I'm learning. HTML progress uh, tag attributes. Dalton is saying attribute tags. 
Okay. So max and value. That's it. Huh? Huh. Um, okay. How to style HTML progress tag. This is basically what I do if, even if I um like if I'm working on something, I'm I just write questions inside of Google. And I think that's more important. Learning how to learn. Learning how to use Google and just asking it, how do I do this? Okay, that's old school, man. That's what it is. basically the huh. See, you have to do. It seems like you have to do this, this kind of stuff, which is like ah. All right, we're gonna skip that part. At least we know we can make the width one hundred percent. So let me go here to. Oh, I, I forgot. What's the name of the thing? Current time. Progress. There we go. Cool. So progress. We'll get that. And we'll just say with 100%. Ha ha! Yay. And let's make sure it's in the center. Because I want to do instead of 100%, let's do 75. And say, hey, why can't you center? I want it centered horizontally. Oh, is it because it's display inline? Can I force block and then... Okay, good. Okay, so I had to force display block. Set auto on both sides to center it and now I can... Cool. Progress! This is not going to do anything to it. Yep. Ah. CSS tricks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. CSS tricks progress bar. Show me, Chris. God of CSS. Spans. Where? 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 So I have to. The, the span inside of it. Oh, that's what you meant by the by the parent bar itself. Okay. Um, so you can't do this inside of Webflow. You can't you can't do that inside of Webflow uh, with no code. You have to actually code this. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do as little code as possible. So that way, whatever I'm doing here is actually happening in real time rather than coding and seeing if the code works. Coding and seeing if the code works. Um, yeah. Let me publish this so you guys can see the progress. I can see my progress. All right. We're doing something. We're doing something. Let's also push this away from the top. And I want to see my... I really want to see my image. So can I give this a class name? Cover cover dash art. So I'll give this a class name that way I can mess around with it. So I give it a class name and I'm going to delete this call this cover dash art give it a background color temporarily give it a height of say or width 100 percent and two sweet okay now i can see what i'm dealing with let's remove that cover art and go back to is that the progress song? yeah song played progress okay 
And so now I can see how far it is from the cover art. So let's do something like this. Cool. Also with the cover art, huh, let's go back to cover art. I can do object fit. I think this will work. Let's see. All right, all right. And if I want to make that taller, I can say 350. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Nice. All right, let's center this one. Is it possible? It should be. So let's see here, time container. Time is a human construct. I'm going to try to teach Nova that. Uh, can we just do simply text align center? Survey says yes. Sweet. So let's just take this time container class, go into Webflow, delete cover art, add time container, center it, and let's also make the font my. I like to use Montserrat. So there we go. Um, let's make it bigger, like 24. 24 pixels tall. All right, let's see what happens with that. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, okay, we'll get, well, okay, okay, yeah. And we want to move this away from there. So let's inspect. And I want to move that time. Ah, hold on. Put it to the side. There we go. Let's move that time. The current time. So we have the current time and the duration. Okay. So it would be nice to push these apart. So current time, let's say margin write 20 20 pixels and then padding right 20 pixels and then a border on the right one pixel solid and then a gray okay okay look at that wait does this thing off is it centered I feel like it's off a couple pixels. Okay, 14. Huh? Okay. All right, we'll do something like that. So we'll just write this inside of Webflow without code. So yeah, um, like this is no code, low code, I don't know. But this is definitely a, a, an advanced tutorial or walkthrough of some sort. Now I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> ah, current time. So I'm going to take current time. So remove that class. Current time. And I said margin or padding is going to be 12. Margin is going to be 20. Look, at, it's happening. And let's go ahead and add a border to the right. Solid, one pixel. And let's kind of make it soft. There we go. Maybe a different style. Yeah. Dotted and dashed. Cool. Very cool. And oh, let's use, let's push this away from the progress. So let me get progress back. And let's push this away like 30 pixels. Nope, too far. There we go. Cool. How's it look? We're doing things. We're doing things. Cool. And now, time container. So, con control container. Okay, so this is play pause. That we that's what we were playing with at first. So control container. We probably 
want some padding at the top. Pad young. Padding on the top, like 10. That would be cool. How about padding everywhere? Let me delete that. Wait. Ah! I'll just do it in Webflow. Okay, so control container. Let's delete this. Control container. Oh, I've already started to style it. All right. Um, I don't know. It doesn't have to be. Well, we'll keep the blue. And let's do padding 10 on all sides. Padding 10 on all sides. And then I think that's it for control container. I know I'm going to have to change the font. Okay, we're getting there. Liking it. So this play pause button is nice. Um, if I add a back, what if I don't? Okay, so that's what happens. So what if I go like that? So this is just an image. It's not really a background color. Um, hmm, should I leave it like that? How come I can't also have color? Mm, I guess I'll leave it like that for now. Let's change the meta. So this meta is... Let's go ahead and change the font. Okay, the font is being shown here. So let's go ahead and... Song name. Let's go ahead and change it to Montserrat. So I'm going to delete this. Put the class song name. Make this semi bold. Semi? Semi. Mm -hmm. Let's see. 26. Let's see how that's working out. Is the font not being added? No, it's not because it's overwritten by that HTML. Okay, that's fine because I'll delete it. And then lastly, artist. So this is happening to meta container. Oh, this is more direct. Okay, that's fine. All right, so now I'm going to clean up some of that HTML or CSS that I've already did inside of Webflow. So it's not overlapping each other. So I know I did control container, so I don't need th this. Why is it spaced? Interesting. Control container. Okay, so I don't need that one. Um, I'll keep those. And then wherever it says font, I'm going to delete the font because I want to set my own font. There we go. Um, I think that's it. Oh, font weight. Let's go ahead and delete that. Cool. All right. Save and close. Let's delete that one. And let's just make sure that everything is Montserrat on the body. Okay. Fresh. There we go. Okay. Ooh, one more thing. This control container needs a margin top. It needs to go away from this. So let's add a div back to it and say control container margin top. There we go. Sweet. And then I can delete that. Cool. Refresh. We got our own custom audio player inside of Webflow.
So it started off very, very messy. Yeah, so we started off very messy, but we got here. Some things we still need to learn, like how do we color the progress uh, without code? Unless you need to use code, then so be it. Um, that's not the right data. These aren't, this isn't actually this uh, music, but uh, yeah, we got it done. Cool. So you'll be able to duplicate this, but we're going to take it one step further. How can we make this dynamic? What if you want the MP3s to come from, well, I mean, what if I want the, the cover art, the title, or I mean, the artist, no, no, the, the song title, the artist, and um, the MP3, the URL to the MP3. What if that can come from a Webflow collection? It is possible. Have I done it before? No. We're going to explore it together. Scott, can you link the, to the CMS? <laughs> yes. I'm there with you. I'm there with you. I was thinking that too. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, if you go to the JavaScript, we need these things. We need name, artist, album, URL, co uh, cover art URL. Uh, so let's make those inside of Webflow. So let me, let me make sure I have a note of it. So it's, there we go. I'm going to go into collections, create a new collection, and let's call this, oh, look at that, songs. Webflow already has a collection template for songs. Oh, where's your, good job, Webflow. <laughs> um, we don't need video, so I'm going to delete that. We don't need lyrics. Song description, eh, you know what? Sure, why not? I mean, why not? Uh, album image, album, date recorded. Let's, we don't need that. So, um, so we need name, artist. Ah, we need artist. So name, artist, album, we have album. Album image, okay, that would be cover art. We can rename this to cover art. So we're using the same terminology everywhere. Uh, cover, oh, and the URL to the MP3. Um, yeah, we can use link. Link to MP3. Oop. MP3. Cool, cool. Let's create collection. We'll add five dummy items. Cool. And let's get some. So that's a long album name. Let's fix that. It's a long artist name. Let's fix that. So let's fix some of the dummy items first. What? Okay, we'll leave it like that. Um, and then the link to the MP3. Let me just get this one. Copy link address. Paste it in here. There we go. Save. Okay, that's short enough. Let's. Uh, uh, uh. And the get another link. Um. Light stream. I'm just, I haven't heard these. I'm just randomly save. Let's just do one more. Mm -mm. Okay. One more. Mm. Special place. I'm just going by the title. Mm, cosmic. Okay, cool. Oh, right there. Okay, cool. Save, and let's delete the other two. All right, so we have our data. Data's in here, good to go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy each of my embeds 
and paste it into the CMS collection page. That one, I'm going back, copy this container, paste it, and then lastly, copy the JavaScript embed, paste it. Cool. Now this is the fun part. You're just con you're just <laughs> pulling data from the CMS, and here's how. Ready? Take the name, delete it. Make sure you have your double quotes on both sides. That's important when it comes to JavaScript. In add field. Name. Who's the artist? Delete. Put the artist. Who's the album? Album. Link to the MP3. MP3. And also the cover art. Delete. Put the cover art. There it is. That's it. And let's put a link. Um, let's put a collection list. Oops. Let's go ahead and put a collection list to the other MP3s. So this is pulling from songs. FYI. And I'm suggesting this to the team as well. And I've had to tell people this uh, very often when they're new to Webflow. But... When you put a collection list, do not use any of these layouts. Do not use it. It is old. It is busted. Unless you have a client who uses Internet Explorer still, don't use this. Leave it as full width. Instead, open up your collection list wrapper, click on collection list, and use the magical world of grid. You have more control over how many columns per breakpoint. Use grid for your collection lists. It's super simple. Boom, I've added three columns on this grid, and I can control the gap, and rows will be automatically generated for me if I have more than three. So, much more simple. All right, let's take this collection list wrapper and say 550, center it, and... We'll just quickly put a link block and this will go to its collection page. This link block will be display block and inside of it will be an image. That image will pull from the cover art and the alt text will be the name. And uh, let's go ahead and push this away too. There we go, publish. We've made it dynamic. Yay, that easy. Let's go to the page and I'll link it on the in the chat. Press play. Huzzah. This is pulling that data was being pulled from the webflow collection. If I click on this, yay, it's the other one. Click on this, it's the other one. Not too hard. That was fun. That was a 40, 41 minute build. Yeah. Oof. Hope you enjoyed it. That was fun. I will go ahead and let you clone it. I'll put the clone link in the in the description as well as in the live chat room right now. So let me do it right now. But yeah, that was fun. Not for a beginner, yeah. Not for a beginner. But if you try to reverse engineer after you um, clone it, maybe that'll help you. Oh, there it goes. 
All right, we have 40-ish minutes, 43 minutes. Do you have any questions? Do you want me to demo anything? Do you want me to look at your project that you're working on and give you some feedback? Um, Fonchi Fox, thanks for the tutorial. My pleasure. But it was more of an exploration than a tutorial, in my opinion. But um, enjoy the clonable. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and, 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 and do the things with it. Do all the things. Oh, oh, even more. Alexander, whoa, 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 whoa. Alexander with five coffees. Thank you so much. Love how you help the world learn about YouTube. I'm not teaching people YouTube, but... I am teaching about Webflow on YouTube, so if that's what you meant, thank you so, so much for the coffee. Someone else bought coffee, uh, whoever you are, thank you. And 20G again. 20G. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the coffee. Um, and I'll put it in the, in the chat room real quick. There you go. Thank you so much. All right, questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy some PC equipment, or I mean PC parts, and like Iron Man says, back in hardware mode. <laughs> mm -mm. All right. Wow. No questions. Here, let me check. Did I miss any answered questions? Not seeing anything yet. That's what Colleen said. Wow. <laughs> uh, what are your settings for your Chrome inspect? I can't never get to get, never get it to show what you have. Uh, everyone in Chrome has, uh, Everyone who uses Chrome, I mean, Firefox, Chrome, all the browsers actually have this inspect element um, feature or dev tools. All you have to do is right click on any element and click inspect and that'll open up. Okay. And if you want to, uh, if you want to dock this window on the side, on the left or on the bottom, Usually it shows up on the bottom by default, but you can also open it in a separate window. But um, yeah, you should you should have this. Just right click on any element and inspect. This is a great way to start learning learning what the code does. There's a lot of times I look at stuff like this and I'm like, I don't understand what's going on, but I'll do something on this right side and mess with it. And if something breaks, I can just easily refresh and try again. Because this is, whenever you're making edits here, you're only making edits on your own machine. And so when you refresh, it's pulling the data from that web server. And so not from your local machine. So you're good. You, you didn't break anything. Fonji Fox, how can we do a persistent element in Webflow? Persistent element in Webflow? Not sure what you mean by that. Persistent element. Can you explain more? Mine looks different for some reason. I'll try to fix things. Yeah, can you explain further? Persistent element. Yeah. Mm. Refresh. Oh. Mm -mm. No questions here, no questions here. Okay, it's starting. 
<laughs> Colleen is <laughs> it's starting to thunder here, get really dark. That may result in it. Oh, oh stay safe, Colleen. <laughs> uh, Fonchi Fox is asking, so can we use the audio player on the whole website instead of it reloading? Ah, okay. Yeah, so that's like SoundCloud when you're moving between pages and that bottom bar, the audio player, is still playing. Um, and it's like, uh, epidemic sound, what I, what I use. Let me... And so here's, uh, here's what Fonchi Fox is talking about. So if I press play, and let me just, there we go. So if I press play, this is playing, right? But if I go to another page, like saying, let me go browse, notice how this bottom bar never left and the progress of this audio file is still playing so i can go anywhere and this is persistent i don't know how to do that i've never tried maybe that's something i can explore um because to me whenever you're going to a new page it's loading new data oh this is probably like a this is probably like a React thing. I don't know anything about React, but in my mind, like the whole web page is actually a shell, and then this is part of that top layer shell, but the bottom layer is one that you can say, hey, uh, add, uh, show me this new page in this bottom layer, but keep that top layer going. And so I think that's what's happening. I have no experience in this that goes beyond my no code low code ability um but if it's possible someone who has better experience with code than me if that's possible to do inside of webflow oh my gosh that'd be amazing that'd be amazing because yeah you could because can you imagine you can make your own um soundcloud epidemic sound like you can Imagine selling, imagine you're a producer and you make beats and you're selling audio files using Webflow and its new um, e-commerce digital downloads feature, you know? And what if you can do something like this? Or w what if you can make your own Twitch where you're going between pages, but that one stream is still happening? That would be awesome. Yeah. One day we'll get there. One day. But that would be cool. Huh. Not many not many uh questions today. Um Yeah, uh Colleen is asking, do you want to review projects? Yeah, I'm up to review projects. Do you have if you have a link to your project, post it. Maybe as people say, yeah, uh, make sure that in the, when you're posting your link, if you want me to look over your project, um, oh yeah, for podcasts as well. If you have a link, make sure to add spaces in between the dot com or something like that, because, uh, YouTube automatically, um, denies links that are not coming from the hosts of the stream. So if you have a, yeah, if you have a uh, project that you want me to look over, now would be the time. Hillary Rose, thanks for all that you do. Thank you so much for the coffee, Hillary. You rock. All right. Yeah, if you... If I don't see any questions or if I don't see any links, I'm guessing we'll end the stream in eight minutes. But again... Oh, yeah, ideas for next week, too. Yeah. Any ideas? I know. Uh, let's see here. Let me go to my page real quick. So someone asked me, would you know how to build a mega menu for mobile? So on my, um, Coffee page, someone asks, uh, Anne asks, would love to know how to build a mega menu for mobile. 
maybe we can do this. Um, and it says similar to moo.com. So, so here's a mega man. Oh, this is a whoa. Okay. This is a mega. This is a mega menu. This is so this is a menu with with ads. So this is an ad. This is an ad. Or is this a blog post? Oof, this oh my gosh. And then this one. I mean, they're all the same layout. And so how does it look on mobile? Oh no. Inspect. Uh, let me dock this to the right. And let's look at this on a iPhone X. Okay. Oh, this is a mega, 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 mega menu on mobile too. How many people are actually going through a menu on their mobile phone that's this huge? Do you need a, let's just call it what it is, a buffet menu on a mobile phone? I'm wondering when, I would love to know the stats on this website, like how many people on a mobile phone or a mobile breakpoint are clicking on on these because that's huge and and major props to the de developers and designers who made this happen it looks super clean but oh man this buffet menu is nuts and then you got that wouldn't it be easier to just say search and if you're looking for something more specific i mean People would go to a site on their mobile phone and like if I'm looking for pick something random stationary greeting cards. Okay, cool. So in my mind, my user experience would be like, I need to make uh, greeting cards. And I know of a place called Moo that does it. So I'm going to Google Moo greeting cards and I'm hoping that the first result is a link directly to here. Yeah. Do you really need this one? Oof. It's huge. Oh, and then you got that thing going on and you got that thing. Going, oof. It's uh, maybe I'll do this. Maybe we'll see. All right, uh, Liam. I wrote in the forum just recently. Uh, let's see here. I wrote in the forum just recently about how the official Webflow navbar works. Wondering if you can explain it. Here's the post from the forum. Thank you so much, um, Colleen, for the for the link and Liam. Here we go. Three days ago, Liam. Hello, everyone. Hi. I've literally just dived into the world of web design this month. Welcome! Welcome to this crazy, never-ending, never-ending, evolving... Oh, I can't talk. Yeah. Never... I'll stop. Welcome. <laughs> and I've decided to start my training, my, my training by copying elements I find intriguing and somewhat complex. That's what I do all the time, just like I did with the stream. So... Good progress. That, that That's a good way to learn. My first project is to make the Webflow navbar. The design itself is, has so many little nuances that I've picked up on, but don't fully understand due to my limited knowledge. So I've come to forums for help. The navbar, when hovering, starts its animation as normal. However, if you switch to the next tab, it won't play the animation. Instead, it holds the bar in place and animates the content into place. Um, okay. Example I'm studying from. Yeah. Let's see here. 
You talking about this? Um, I th let me look into my Webflow account real quick because I actually did that already, and you can clone it and you can look into it. Uh, da -da -da -da. Looking, looking. It should be in here. Where are you? Where are you? Custom menu. No. Where are you? Where are you? I've done this. I've already done this. Hold on. No. Content switching. Huh. I thought I did it. I know I did. Hold on. I'm looking through my account. I have too many Webflow builds. Maybe this one. Mm -mm -mm. I think it's in here. Wait, more grid. Ugh. Okay. If I find it, I'll let you know. Please have a question. I tried many, but how can you make auto increment number in a list? I'll take that. Hold on. Is this it? Okay, I think I found it. Um, and maybe I have to update this. I even made a video too. So, so this is like halfway done. But yeah, um, I'll I'll put the clonable link in the chat room. Yep. Cool. All right. I think that's what you want. Let me see here. Where's the link for the clone? Is it clonable? Yeah, it's clonable. Here you go. Enjoy. So that's that would be the basics inside of there. But yeah. All right. Um auto increment. Cool. Um, let's, let's get into that one. Let's see here. Edit. Cancel. Hold on. Let me get into the audio player. I'll show you. How do I do it? It's just... Oh, okay. It's simple JavaScript. And let's do it to this one. I think this is a good one. It's just a... Yeah. So what Nazar is asking is how do you add a number to each of these? Cause like if I go to a collection item and then let's just give it a big heading and I say, I want this to be number one, but then I want this one to show number two, three, four, etc. How do you do that? So here's what I would do. I would um, put whatever text block or whatever, wherever you want, style it however you want, and then give it a class name. I'm going to call it article number, whatever class name you want. And then I would Google search um, jQuery um, increment number by one. Hmm. There we go. So, oh no, that's too, no. I know there's a simple way. Come on. Isn't there like a loop or something like for loop? Hold on, finding it. Um, uh, Java, no, jQuery, no, no, JavaScript. 
loop. There has to be. Ah, there we go. So here, JavaScript loop. So instead of writing um, this every time, so try yourself. So I think this makes it hard to understand. How can I make it easy to understand? Um, okay, I'll just take this and this. Um, text. Okay, let me try to explain it. Wait, let me let me do it first, and then I'll exp explain if it works. Hold, please. Um, da -da -da, da -da -da -da, and then. Um, oh yeah, okay, save. Let me do this. Uh, it's a collection item. Okay, cool. Hold on. Hold, please. Um, um article item is this. Dot length. Uh -huh. Paul, thank you so much for the coffees. You rock. There's like some people who are donating and they're not even uh, talking chat room. So um, to the people who are just watching, thank you so much. Um, hope I, I, I'm glad this is uh, valuable to you. All right, so like that, like that, and then go like that, like that. Okay, so go like that, and no, I don't want that. What I want to do is um, article number. So yeah, article number. Uh, huh. uh, okay, uh, does this work? Does this work? I don't know. <laughs> it didn't. Congrats. No, there's no, hmm, there's no errors. That's nice. Cool. Not cool. Did I do something wrong? Article number. Is it semicolon? In really? And the text it should be it should be that. Yeah. And then come on. This is not a coding stream. Why? This is not a coding stream. So, oh man, I thought it would be easy. Go back here. Oh, wait, what? Wait, huh? Huh? Hmm? I just want to get that number. Oh, because it's because I isn't. A string, but I, I want that to be a number. I equals zero. So I is zero, and then for is, uh, I thought it'd be so much simpler if, if if there's a coder in the house. I thought it would be so much easier. I've done it before. Hold on. I've done it with a previous client, but I don't, but I can't show his um, project because he hasn't launched it yet. So let me look for it. I'll get you the code. Uh, there we go. Okay. 
I can't wait for him to launch it. It's one. It's an awesome. Such an awesome um, project to work on. Where is it? Damn it. Oh well. Sorry I'm taking long. I wish I can show you this. This is such a badass website. But it's not mine to have. That's the thing about um, projects. I've learned. It's projects. You're never supposed to fall in love with them. Okay. Never fall in love with your projects. Because if you do, you'll only set yourself up for disappointment. Because the project is for your client. And if your client changes anything in the future, it wasn't yours to begin with. They already paid you. They're happy with it. And that transaction, the way you made your client feel, is more important than what the the project is. You know, the project is not yours, basically. Project number. They did that. Oh, it's that easy. Oh! I was going about it all wrong. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Okay, we're... Wait, no. Don't want to show that. Oof. Come on. Mm-hmm. And there we go. Cool. All right, we're back. All right, so I was doing it wrong, obviously. So let me do this. For each collection item. So yeah, collection item. For each collection item, you have a number, say AN for article number. Da, 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 da. So much easier just to use each, yeah. And then it'll be um, this dot children. Oh, actually, no, we don't even have to do it like that. It can just be article number. And I'll explain this. I knew it was easy. Gosh. There we go. Sorry about that. All right. Here you go. How to make incremental numbers. So you style this however you want, give it a class name, and then for that article number or whatever, you give it this code right here. So you tell JavaScript, hey, I have a number. And the number is, uh, I'm going to name it AN or article number. Okay, so you're telling, you're telling JavaScript, I'm setting this up as zero. And equals zero. All right, got it. So and is a number. Cool. That's what the um, computer is saying. And then you say, okay, computer, find all of the article numbers. And for each one that you find, I want you to do a thing. Okay, that's what function means. Do something. For each one, I want you to take this right here, the article number, and add a one to it. So we started at zero and we're saying zero plus one equals one. All right. And so once you do that simple math, put that number in, put that number one as a text inside of this, which is article number. Does that make sense? So again, for each article number, do math, add the result into the text of this element. And then when you're done with that first one, do it again. But since we've already told the computer that an equals one, when it does that loop again for the second one, it's going to say one plus one equals two. Loop again, two plus one loop again just so it's like that and that's how you get 
incremental numbers. Cool? All right. I'm going to clip that one. Uh, can you make a note, um, Colleen, to clip that? Thank you. Um, cool. Okay. Fonchi Fox, how can you make a horizontal scroll site like this? Canals, Amsterdam. Dot NL. Let's see here. Ooh. Scroll or drag sideways to navigate. Scrolling down. Oh, okay. Oh, gosh, that felt so bad. I wasn't happy. Because that, like, I'm here, right? And then I'm like, okay, I'm scrolling. It, it just, it, it felt slow. It took me, it took a while to get to that thing. But anyways, all right. Can you do this? Whoa, wait a minute. It went all the way. So it starts here. And you can go left or right by scrolling up or down. Can you do this scrolling in Webflow? Yes. Whoa, wait a minute. Did we go all the way around? How far back does this go? Into the Big Bang? Wow. Wow. Okay. Probably giving people some seizures. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. It can happen. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. This can happen. The dragging, you can't do that inside of Webflow with, without code right now. But yeah, this is possible. And it's just the same way you do any other horizontal scroll. Just search my YouTube channel for horizontal scroll. Um, it's basically the same thing. But instead of starting from the very left of the div and then scrolling down and it goes towards the right, it probably has to start somewhere in the middle and then scrolling up or down. That's the tough part starting in the middle. I don't know how to do that yet. Um, yeah. All right, 15 more minutes. Any other questions before we wrap up? Any other ideas for a future stream? Probably do a mega menu on mobile, not sure. Cause that one is like, really? Do you need one? Because you haven't searched me. I guess it all depends. I'd really like to know what's the use case for a Mega Menu on Net mobile. Because honestly, how many people are going through a... Or, simple example. Because a lot of people have it. You have... Uh, if you have the Amazon app on your phone, how many times... On the Amazon app, have you clicked on the top left hamburger menu button and then clicked on shop by department and just scrolled and clicked on other, like, have you ever? No, because you're just like, okay, I want to buy something. I know what I want. I'm going to use Alexa to find it for me. I'm going to use the search bar to find it for me or the camera uh or the barcode uh scanning yeah from hillary rose oh that reminds me with the nav bar is a way to is there a way to automate the navigation menu like if you add a new page it auto populates on the nav bar um with um with custom or sorry with uh static pages it can't be automated. You have to add static pages to your drop down menu. If it's a collection list, then it 
it adds it. So let me show you how. So we have these. Let me go ahead and add a... Hello? There we go. Let's add a nav bar to the top. And in that nav bar, we have a drop down. And in this drop down, we're going to open it up. And what we can do in the drop down is drag in a collection list inside of the drop down list, pull that source from, say, categories. So we have, yeah, a couple of categories. Cool. And then drag one of the drop down links into a collection item and then delete the other two drop down links. And then from here, style this however you want. But then this would link over to the category page. The text would be the name of the category. And so whenever you add a new category, so let me go here, add a new category. Hillary Rose. So I've added a new category and there you are. You're already up there. And that's it. That's how you add uh, pages automatically using collection list wrappers. Hope this helps. I was trying to add a custom audio player for this site, Roundhouse. Can you tell me what you think, please? All right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ooh. Cool. All right. So where's the roundhouse? That's what it's yelling at me. <laughs> I think my audio level, I should have fixed that. Hold on. Sorry if I'm too loud. My bad. Um, where's the audio player? Cool. Do I have to click on where, where do I press play? Yeah, let me know. Where do I press play? Uh, Pablo, I was trying to add a custom audio player for this. Oh, sorry. Uh, can I fix the position of a menu in a sidebar so it stays in view when I scroll down? Uh, yeah, you can either, either use position, position sticky or um, position fixed. Mm hmm. And I have a YouTube video that explains all the CSS positioning, so take a look at that one. Click on releases. Okay. Yeah, that's not very apparent. You need to make this more like a button. Because I didn't know you can click on that. All right, so releases is here. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to play it because I don't know if it's copyrighted. But it looks like it works. Let's see what it, what is this? Is this the embed? Yeah, it's the embed from Bandcamp. Yeah, it works. Cool. You just need to uh, style these more. And you're good to go. Yeah. So, what did you want me? To, can you tell me what you think about it? Yeah. I mean, is it centered? I don't think it's centered on the page. Yeah, it's not centered. But it works. It's simple. And again, like, you don't want to make a design too crazy when the main focus is not the design, but something else. And right now the focus is a video, or sorry, uh, a song. And so you want to make it simple for people to navigate through. But just style these a little bit more and you're good to go. 
HD web design. Okay. Yeah. All right, everyone. Let's wind down. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you all so much who's donated to the coffee fund, which is going into new PC parts. So there's no more lagginess in the stream. Make it more smoother. Um, and then want to do more things because with more power on the PC, I would love to have like, I don't know, live contests or um, more live interviews like I did with Tomas or Toma the other the other week. Um, yeah, it would be cool. Do some more stuff. But thank you all so much. Uh, let's see here. How do I? Uh, wait, no. Uh, press play. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Still trying to learn how to be my own technical director. <laughs> Something new every time. Uh, let's see that. Yeah. So thank you all so, so much for being here, spending time with me. Hopefully this is very valuable to you. If you weren't here and you're just watching the recording, you're not in the live chat, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Um, these are two hours that I happily give in hopes that you're learning Webflow, you're learning the world of no code, you're learning web design. It's it's my pleasure and I'm honored that you're you're here. So I will see you next time. Let's let's do this next Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time. If you have an idea for a future topic for the stream, let me know. Uh, DM me. We're right there at the Pixel Geek on Twitter. I'm there very actively. Uh, hope you all are doing well, staying safe, healthy, and indoors. We'll all get through this together. I know it sounds cliche, but we will. You know, wear the masks when you're outdoors because it's not just for, it's not mainly for you. It's for everyone else. Care for others. Wear that mask. And yeah, I'll see you next week. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.